Hello everyone and welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. As you'll know, if you know me or you've watched any of my videos, access to education is so important to me and so dear to my heart and a big part of this channel and a big part of my time on YouTube in this space. And so for me, I've really been looking to collaborate with a charity who I felt embodied all the same attitudes and could really help me to elevate what we're trying to do and, and to raise money for a really important cause. And so I am so, so proud to share that I am an ambassador for United World Schools. They are an education charity who seek to teach the unreached. That means reaching the most rural communities in the world, specifically in Nepal, Cambodia, Madagascar, and Myanmar, and to help fund the creation of a school in those areas. They have a kind of five-year plan in those places that they go to, to train up local teachers, to get as many kids into school as possible and staying in school. And hopefully, if all goes to plan, by the end of that time period, the school should, in theory, be self-sufficient, or at least now have the apparatus and the framework for the government to uh, pay for teachers and that kind of thing. So the idea is not to go and save communities, but to empower them. And that, for me, is the crucial thing. It is about empowerment through education. And so I was very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to go and visit some of these schools and some of these areas in action. I want to clarify that as ambassadors, we self-funded the trips, we paid for our flights. The donations to the charity are used for the work the charity do. I just wanted to add that before I share the trip. But basically we went to see a school that is up and running and in action and has this super sustainable model. So that's a primary school. And then we went to see a secondary school where United World Schools have a dormitory. And having that dormitory allows kids from these rural areas to come and stay at the school during the week. Because otherwise the distance from where they live to getting to the school is just impossible on a day-to-day -day basis. So we could really see that journey of how United World Schools benefits people. But also at the end of the week, at the end of the video, as you'll see, we visited one of these rural areas that does not yet have a school. And seeing just how remote it really is, like what remote actually means, was actually genuinely a life-changing experience. And it really put everything into perspective for me. You can see the word remote on paper and have a rough idea of what that means. But when you feel every bump in the road, when you have to get the car through a river, that's when you really start to understand just how far these communities are from local cities. And then speaking to those people and seeing just how much they would benefit from education. Like for example, I think something like 90% of Cambodia is agricultural. And so the contents of a maths lesson is directly used on these farms to work out how to yield the most efficient crops, how to weigh the crops, how to price those crops when selling in markets. Education opens doors. It opens up so many opportunities. And we were on this trip specifically focusing on girls' education because, and this is so cool. So basically in the UK, we have a UK aid match scheme where the government will select charities and for a set period of time, they will double any donations made by UK residents to those charities. Now, United World Schools is currently, at this moment in time, one of those charities on the UK aid match scheme. But their girls will be girls campaign. The point is that girls should be whatever they want to be. And education is the catalyst to unlocking that. So we were specifically focusing on girls education on this trip and seeing how United World Schools directly impacts girls and women in these areas. And so I wanted to take you along with me. I wanted to share that trip. I will leave a just giving uh, donation page down below if you would like to go and support this incredible cause, this incredible charity. Thank you to those of you who have already donated. It means the absolute world. And now on with the video that I filmed out in Cambodia. I hope that you enjoy. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, you might have noticed this is not my usual background. This is not my bedroom. Today we are actually in Cambodia in the Ratnakiri region which is in like the northeast of Cambodia and we are heading to one of the amazing schools that United World Schools helps to run and we're actually getting onto that ferry to get across this river. And the fed one of the yeah. Okay, so we're driving through Ratnakiri and basically Laos is over there and Vietnam is there. We have two borders on either side of this area. Um, so just to kind of give you a bit of a perspective on like where we are geographically. Um, so yeah, very near lots of different places. Okay, so slight change plan. Um, the river is too deep to get the cars across because we were gonna kind of drive through the river. So we're getting out and we're gonna try and get a ferry and we'll meet the cars on the other side, I think. <laughs> so um, 
kind of working out as we go. Almost got the hat, that was almost the gonna... Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. So apparently the lanyards are orange because the colour of the sand here is orange and UWS actually started in Cambodia. So it's a little ode to that. There we go. Panta sand, panta sand, panta sand. <laughs> There we go. Exhibit A. <laughs> and V, what colour were we instructed not to wear? Uh, they said white, but they said we were <laughs> off white. <laughs> it's actually cream. Actually, okay. The girls are gonna get it, the ones that don't. Okay, so we've come from the river to the school. Panning, panning, panning. The school, ta-da! <laughs> and basically, on this trip, what we're doing is we're visiting this school, which is all community-led, so all the teachers are local. During COVID, a lot of kids um, couldn't go to school at all and so they need to learn those skills so before they go on to the more advanced stuff they're doing very much community-based um, learning then next we're going to a government transition school so the government have helped them to enforce the na national curriculum and then finally we're going to visit a third area where there isn't a school um, to basically see what United World Schools could do there and um, how the community um, are operating without formal education. So, yeah, this is the first school. We're going to go and have a look and meet everyone. So we were just walking into the school and now we're listening to a mother's meeting of mums of some of the girls who study here um, and make sure that they stay coming to the school. Um, so a big part of um, the United World Schools campaign is to keep girls in education so they have a kind of dropout prevention programme and that's a big part of what the mothers help to do. Okay. Mother's meeting was really interesting. We have a translator um, who's kind of helping us to understand so that we're not interrupting what they're actually trying to do. We're sort of just observing. And they were basically saying, the mothers were saying that one of the reasons that kids drop out in the summer months is because they need to work on the farms. Um, in this area, everyone um, has their own farm, and they were saying that in May and June they're working in the rice fields, and they get the family from all over to come to the farm and help them out and, and all to work together. And so sometimes the kids don't actually arrive at the school because they're not able to because they have to work in the mornings until like 9 a.m., but school starts at 7. So they've already missed, you know, two hours of school, and so increasingly they start to fall behind and lose confidence, I guess, in themselves. And so um, the teachers here go above and beyond to make sure that the students feel comfortable coming to school and that they can get here, that there aren't too many barriers in the way of their education. And so this mother's group is being set up to essentially do the same thing where they can just keep track of everyone and make sure they know the reasons why people aren't coming so that they can help offer solutions within the community. I think it's so important that United World Schools are helping to set these things up because it just means that it's a sustainable project. It's not just like set up a school, good luck. It's an ongoing effort to empower the community and make sure that they have the apparatus in place and the frameworks to make sure kids are coming to the school and staying at the school for as long as possible. You know how it is, the first place that I wanted to see was the library in the school. The staff here just were showing me around and telling me what some of the books were about, which as you know is a very big passion of mine. So um, it's really cool to see the books that they're reading here and kind of learning from. Let me show you some. So this is the library just here. So these books... Um, I have been reliably informed this translates to I want to read and then this is Adventure in the City so they're learning um, through the story and this apparently is a well-known Kamai fairy tale which is about an ant and a cricket and so the cricket is seen as like lazy it's always singing it's not working hard whereas the ant works like all year round and then the cricket is the one left without food like in the winter because it hasn't been working so the idea is to teach them about you know the merits of working hard and what a beautiful building this is. By the way, big fan of the interior design here. Um, I want a background like this all the time. I love the fun thing that they've done. Um, I just love that it's such a colourful room to come and learn how to read. It just makes it so much more exciting and appealing. So yeah, it's really special to get to come and actually see this in person um, and to see the work that they're actually doing in the school. So this is the classroom and they follow the government curriculum as well as doing a few extra bits and bobs. So this is one of the classrooms where the students sit and then learn. 
So in Khmer, Chenang means yummy, and this is Chenang. <laughs> Chenang indeed. So this is where we're sleeping. How, how's it going in here? Struggling a little bit. <laughs> My zip I'll, I'll respect your zip for you. you. There we go. Yeah, but then how will I get out? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're on your own now. Maybe your head should go this side. Can you respect my zip? <laughs> <laughs> they told us to res respect the zip, so. Uh... Well, there's another zip over there. Ta da! There's another one? <laughs> yeah, to get it out. Oh. Like oh, so zip it to the middle. You're on your own. Uh -huh. Good. No mosquitoes now. Unless they already got in, in which case, she's screwed. <laughs> Whoa, so you can make it king size. And just stretch your leg. Just stretch out. If you go back in, it's a single bed. <laughs> So the rice is being cooked inside the bamboo. We cut the ball and soft the meat. Right. And they just sauce very thin and then they put in. I see. Yeah. Tastes very good because smelling by the bamboo. Oh, yeah. so the bamboo sort of infuses it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this one we wow. saw you again. That is called a goat to fill the water for drinking fresh water. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they collect the water from near the riverside. Mm -hmm. They have a natural well. Yeah. And then they keep the water to fill in the goat. And wow. then a few hours later, the water coming colder. And then they're drinking the fresh water. It's cold? Yeah, wow, it's cold. oh I see. Still, you can... Oh, can I feel? Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. Even like the temperatures of yeah, yeah, yeah. still water cold. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> How cool is this? Crazy. That's it. Swimming, vibing, book yeah. king. Oh. So we wrapped up the kind of school day and then we went for the most lovely swim in the river, which was so relaxing and we've been sweating buckets because you know, we're British, so when it gets to like 12 degrees, we're sunbathing. Not like that here, okay? It's humid, it is hot. So we've been basically like sweating out of it. So we went to the river, you know, refreshed, and now um, everyone is taking us for a tour of the community, of the village, um, and we're getting to see where they all live and how they live as well, which is really nice to get to see the whole lifestyle that they live. So that's what we're doing right now. So this is the rice. Hmm? No spicy. No. Cooked in the bamboo. Yeah, they did it no spicy for you guys. <laughs> ah, wimps. They have a really ceremony. the sounds of the jungle. People pay good money for a soundtrack like this on like the, on like different apps and stuff to help them get to sleep. And we just get it right here. <laughs> so I'm hoping that tonight is gonna be a very nice night's sleep. We're actually in, can you see this? This is my bed for the night, this hammock. I've never slept in a hammock before, so I'm actually really looking forward to it. And who knows, this could be the best night's sleep of my whole life. And maybe this is how I'll have every night's sleep of my life going forward. Here it is, the bed. Hello MTV and welcome to my crib. This is like my actual dream because I'm sleeping in the library. Can you imagine? This is I'm a, the books in real life. I'm a parody of myself. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, which classroom is everyone sleeping in? Library, Jack. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Do you know what? I have never in my life woken up at 5 a.m. and been happy about it. But this morning, so peaceful, so relaxing. I feel refreshed. I'm quite happy, you know. I can't find my zip, but you gotta respect the zip because this keeps you enclosed and safe and the bugs out. And I have to tell you that I had a sleeping companion right here, which was a gecko. <laughs> and we didn't know why geckos were called geckos until now, but it's because they go, gecko, gecko, <laughs> all night. <laughs> and I had a little companion just here. So it's nice to know that you're never alone.
<laughs> How did you turn that into something inspirational? I don't know, because actually it was really annoying. <laughs> now, the challenge is getting out of the hammock. <laughs> did I hit my head on the floor? Yes. Good morning. We have some breakfast. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, ta-da! Morning team! Good morning! How are we feeling? Good. I feel like I was um, back in my mum's belly. <laughs> <laughs> like I felt like I was in the womb. I see, okay, that's a pretty good review. I think so. You, do, you are like a new woman today, I think. Yeah, like mm. I slept in the fetal position. Mm -hmm. There's a flower in your hair. The baby gave me the girl. <laughs> this is like the best of my life. <laughs> 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 So this morning we have been going to some lessons. We went to a Khmer lesson, which is basically the Cambodian national language. And in that language, there are 33 consonants, 23 vowels, and then 15 special characters. And then also, when there's two consonants right next to each other, you have like a special link between them. So there's so much to memorize. We then also went to a kindergarten class. And the thing is, so in this community, they speak an indigenous language called Gabai, which means that when they come here, they're learning Khmer, the national language, so that they can then go on to the national curriculum, which is all taught in Khmer. But it's really interesting getting to sit in on their classes and seeing what they're actually learning about. And yesterday, when we spoke to um, a group of girls who are a group of students at the school, we asked them, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, what, what are your hopes and dreams? And every single one said they want to be a teacher. Every single one. Which just shows you the value of what they get here. Like, they appreciate it so much and they want to then pass that on to the next generation too. Um, they really look up to the teachers who are teaching them this stuff, which I thought was really, really sweet. So um, yeah, it's been a really fascinating experience, like actually getting to be here in the school and observing what they do just like day to day. And shoes come off before you enter the school. So we have come to a secondary school uh, in the United World School's car, the whip. That's, uh, that's what we're driving. And this is a secondary school, a government secondary school, but this building right behind me is a United World School's dorm. 40 in each room. I think we have one girl's dorm and two boys' dorms. And basically, this means that a lot more people... Do you mind? <laughs> basically, this means that a lot more people have access to this secondary school, so at least 50% of the student body at this school are, have been to a United World Schools primary school prior to this. So they just would not be here without United World Schools. Like they would not have this opportunity. They would not have access to the next step of their education either. It's really awesome to see what United World Schools are actually doing at the school and where they're living, what they're up to, um, and how United World Schools directly benefits individual students. We also spoke to two really lovely girls who are United World School students and they're from villages um, outside of Banlang, which is where we are right now. And what I found so interesting and what I hadn't really considered is that in their communities they speak tribal indigenous languages so those communities have their own language and so it's really important for them to come to school, learn Khmer, which is the Cambodian national language, and then be able to go back to their, their communities afterwards and teach kids so that they then, those kids in the communities, preserve their native language, their tribal indigenous language, as well as learning Khmer, so that they then have more opportunities throughout Cambodia. And the national curriculum is taught in Khmer, so that's an essential step. But you need people from those communities to be educated in Khmer so they can then go back to their communities and empower them as well. So it's a real, like, it's a really sustainable system that they have going on where each generation empowers the next. So it's really amazing to see. I think that we don't... <laughs> I just thought that was a really interesting nuance that we've got to see by actually being here, like on the ground and coming to visit the actual schools because I just had never even considered about indigenous languages and languages specific to communities that people come from to go to these schools. So it's been very interesting, very inspiring. 
everyone wants to be a teacher, which is so amazing because you can just see how much education means to them and that they want to go back to their communities um, and return the favor, I guess. <laughs> this guy, he wants to collab. Jeez, you hit a million subscribers and everyone wants to be in the videos all of a sudden. <laughs> everyone wants their 15 minutes, right? One of the girls that we met, by the way, we obviously did learn their names and stuff, but we don't want to say them for privacy reasons. But one of the girls that we met is the first in her whole, not only family, but whole community to get this far in her education journey. So she's now in grade 12, but a lot of students won't make it anywhere near that far. And she's hoping to go to university. So we're really rooting for her. Actually, in, in their villages, people tend to get married. Girls especially tend to get married about 13 years old. So these girls were 21. And so for them to still be in education is a massive sacrifice for them and a massive decision um, which they've been able to make thanks to United World Schools. So it was very special to get to meet them and see what United World Schools are doing for real people. So yeah, I feel very lucky to get to be here. I do not feel very lucky that this cockerel keeps trying to ruin my shot. <laughs> okay guys, I heard that YouTuber fights are bringing in the big bucks like Logan Paul, KSI. It's me versus this freaking cockerel. Yeah, that's right, you walk away. His silence me. is deafening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, now we've got nothing to say. Uh-huh. Look at me standing like so far away from it as well. I'm like, I'm not actually gonna go anywhere near it because I will lose. <laughs> this was a confrontation. Um, and now I'm going to run very far away before it chases me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Guys, we are driving oh, this, to yeah. a literal- In the river. This man river. is our hero. <laughs> like, we're Thank you, Savette. Yeah. If there's one man that's gonna get us there, it's Savette. Savette. <laughs> So, we are heading to, <laughs> that was right on cue, <laughs> the road is a paid actor. <laughs> um, so we are heading to a very rural community at the moment to basically see an area that doesn't have a school and doesn't have formal education um, to basically help with the United World Schools research to see about whether it's possible to make a school there, whether it would be beneficial to the community, how they can empower that community. So. Um, we're currently seeing quite how far out it is from everything else because we're on some remote roads where we're like crossing rivers in the car and stuff. This man is directing us on, from the back. <laughs> Our new pal who picked us up halfway because we saw we were lost. <laughs> and like this is the vibe, right? And we went through an actual river, like we drove through water. <laughs> like. Do you understand this swam? The car swam. The car swam. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, that is not a joke. The car was swimming. <laughs> okay, How uh, beautiful. So it's stunning. Beautiful. I, so since we've been on this journey, all I've been wondering about, like especially how remote the communities are, mm. is it's taken us hours to get to this point. We've had to cross a river with a car. We've had to go, we've gotten lost mm. that someone is literally guiding us. Pan, right? pan, pan, pan. He's guiding oh, us. Yep. Tractor. Exactly, there's tractor. There he is. All of these things that I'm thinking to myself, how would a school even end up being here, number one, and getting the teachers in? Mm -hmm. And that's why the work that United World Schools are doing is so important and why mm. we're so proud to be ambassadors because they will literally come this far in, do the research and notice there's no school and then come and build one, mm -hmm. supply it with a teacher, a government teacher, fund it, fund the students, blows my mind and look at where we are, look, 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 like I'm just impressed, I'm in awe actually and it's taken us a long time to get here. The United World Schools have a slogan which is teach the unreached and I got it but I was like oh like what do you mean? Now I'm like Wow, this community is hard to mm. reach and the fact that they're bringing education to it. I can only imagine that these kids are like waiting to go to school but then there's no school. So the fact that United World Schools does this work is phenomenal and I am in absolute awe. I just am. So we've arrived at the village. They all came and sat here and we uh, got to speak to everyone which was so nice. So this building here is what the community has built as an informal school right now. Created a building, like a multi-purpose building for the community where they can find people who are willing to try and teach kids now just as this short-term solution. Um, yeah, and like they were saying they're already requesting more funding for desks, like mm -hmm. just trying their best to make this something that will be really easy for United World Schools to then fund. And I think what was especially inspiring for me is what incredible allies men are in this village to girls' education. Yeah. Like it's incredible hearing from the village chief how he really wants the girls in his community to have opportunities to earn an income, to I don't know, be educated, to go out and do incredible things and not just get married at 13, which is you know something that often happens. 
happens. So, yeah, I'm just being really inspired, and I really want them to have a school. I really hope Which, they get it. Which, if they get it, will literally go where we are currently standing. It's gonna go, it will potentially go right here. Hopefully, Hopefully. if it does get built, which we are fingers crossed, it will be built right over there in that land. And do you know what would be really cool? If a year from now we got to return and see in action yeah. that would be full circle moment. That would be so yeah. cool. Yeah, exactly. So help us fundraise, guys. Yes. Link below. Yeah, but it's so cool seeing that the donations, like the money that we are raising, literally could end up being a building right here. I feel the excitement for like yeah. seeing the parents. I think we've been told how many times, like, oh, the parents are involved in building mm. the school, but we never got to see it from the moment of beginning. So to actually get the start of one school that's gonna get yeah. built. Mm -hmm. It's crazy and the parents were the ones front forward like parents here are like can I, I will help to... build this school <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh my kids can I even come yeah. like and that has actually just nuanced and switched a lot about what I think. Me too actually. Mm. Just realizing how much the community are driving this. Like it's not just the United World Schools no. coming into a community and being like oh let's no. let's build a school here. Like it's communities Begging for education. So we just spoke to a teacher who was talking about what they did during COVID and basically she so she works at a local school which is like when I say local it's like six kilometers away um, and she commutes every single day to go and teach there but during COVID she came to this village and she went around every single day to the different houses and would independently teach the kids. She would go around house by house and teach them and when she was speaking I was like getting emotional you know because it's so incredible what people are willing to do for the sake of education. So now we are heading back in the car. It's going to be a bumpy ride. My stomach is not necessarily looking forward to it, but it <laughs> is really proving to me how much these communities need education because they are so far removed from the city. So, see ya. <laughs> and that was our trip. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that I managed to convey just how powerful it was as an, as an experience to get to interact with these people, engage with them, meet them, shake their hands and understand their lifestyles and their lives. Everyone we met was so welcoming and passionate about education. It was a real privilege to get to meet these incredible people. Yeah, I'm very, very grateful. We spent the rest of the week with United World Schools visiting various government institutions, local government, the Department for Women's Affairs, and we also visited United World Schools HQ, where it all began and where it's thriving today. We met Sita, who is the founder and such an inspiring and incredible man. He's won awards in Cambodia from the King for the amazing work that he does and how he empowers these communities. And he has such big plans for how he wants to continue to expand this charity to help more people, to bring schools to more places like the ones that you saw. So these are some pictures of the construction work of the United World Schools schools. <laughs> um, and you can see like community members actually helping to build the schools as well, like local people wanting to build this site of education. Yeah, How cool! Honestly, this is incredible. And do you print a new one every time you see uh, it? Uh, we, sometimes we don't print because of expensive. We, we, yeah. we, we, we have stickers. Okay. I didn't expect we become this big. Yeah. Because our, our, our vision, our plan was to build maybe 10 schools. Wow. Luck just come and current people just joining. And how many is it now? 270? 107, uh, 135 schools in Cambodia. Wow. And then 270 overall. Yeah. Wow. And this is the award from the king. Wow. The actual king. <laughs> and this is the Minister of Education in Cambodia. He's the number one man in charge of the entire education in the country. Wow. So he award that on, on behalf of the government. He awarded. Oh, that's this one here? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I just feel so incredibly inspired by everything and everyone that we got to meet. Like I said, the link to donate to this wonderful charity will be in the description box down below. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I'm so happy to get to bring you along on this journey and I love you a lot. All the best, stay in touch and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.